and God can receive uh, praise from it. And God uh, can be seen by those who don't know God as somebody that must really be something. If these people, in the midst of, of their disease, still glorify and praise Him, if these people, in the midst of their trials and their pains and their sorrow, continue to serve Him and still got a smile on their face and still they got peace and still they don't moan and groan and complain. God gets the glory. Jump down to verse 16. For which cause we faint not, that though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Though the outward man has problems, situations, and, and troubles, and sicknesses, and, and disease, and, and, and is all this stuff going on, the inward man is renewed day by day. That inward man can continue to grow, get stronger, uh, get closer, learn more, uh, be renewed every day uh, with all that goodness that God has to, to give us. He says, for which cause we faint not. We don't buckle under the load of sickness. We don't buckle under the load of financial pressure. We don't buckle under the load of family problems. We don't buckle under the load of all these other things. Uh, but we continue uh, to have that inward man grow. We don't faint. We don't stop. We don't give up. And I got to go back to this because this is the key. This is so important. You got to understand you are under attack. And there's only one way to fight back. And it's what God is telling us here. That is the way to be victorious. That is the way to overcome. Uh, that is the way uh, to lift God up. That is the way to run Satan off. And if he comes and he starts hitting you with sickness and you give into that and you let him worry you and eat up your mind and bring you down. He's winning. And if he sees he's winning, he's going to keep on beating on you with it and beating on you with it and beating on you with it. Uh, but if when that comes, you say, I trust God. I believe God. Uh, you take it to God. Uh, you pray, God, uh, I would that you heal me. But if not, Give me the strength. Give me the boldness. Give me the courage. Uh, give me the faith. Give me the peace I need to get through this and to still uh, speak for you, to still glorify you, to still lift you up. We got to be, uh, like I talked about last week, like the three Hebrew children, whether he'll deliver me or not, I don't know. But nonetheless, I ain't bound to anything else. Amen. That's how we got to be. And I'm going to tell you, uh, when you get through the battle, uh, when you get through the war, uh, when you fight through this thing uh, that Satan has brought against you, when you come out on the other side, you're going to be stronger. You're going to be closer. You're going to have more faith. Uh, you're going to have more peace. You're going to have more joy. How do soldiers become good soldiers? The term they use, the trial by fire. You gotta be in the battle and learn how to fight. You gotta be in the battle and understand what it is to fight. And then, when the next battle comes along, you're better prepared and you know more about what to do. And you become a good soldier. You become a victorious soldier. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Remember <coughs> this. For our light affliction. Again, I want you to remember who's writing this. The man that was left for dead, the man that was stoned, the man that was shipwrecked, the man that was jailed, the man that was beaten. And he said, our light affliction. And again, we haven't gone through near what Paul. And if Paul can say, it's a light affliction. How could Paul say that? <laughs> Paul can say it was a light affliction 
Because he has a God that is so much bigger than the problem. So much bigger than the situation. So much bigger than the circumstance. <clears throat> and listen to this. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You know when you're sick? A week seems like forever. But let's go back to what James says. This life is a vapor. You're here, and you're gone. But we don't think that way. Because this is what we know. This is what we understand. This is everything. We got to get in a heavenly mindset. Define eternity. That's what's waiting. What is eternity compared to 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, whatever? This is but a moment. So if 90 years is but a moment, what is three weeks? What, even if it's the whole 90 years, it's still but a moment. Paul said, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, listen to this, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. If you go through these things, glorify it and praising God and lifting God up and being a witness and being a testimony, what does Paul say? It works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Listen, I don't pretend to know how heaven will be, how the rewards will be, how all that will be. But I know what the Bible says. Every one of us is going to stand before God and be tried by fire. And if our works are burned, we suffer loss. But if our works remain, we have reward. It's not talking about physical labor when it says works. If when I stand before God and he can see that through my problems, my situation, my, my financial issues, my sicknesses, my family problems, whatever it is, he can see through that I stood. When I'm tried by fire, that fire is going to reveal that even in the midst of it, he glorified me. Even in the midst of it, he stood for me. Even in the midst of it, he wouldn't allow it to bring him down. That's going to remain and bring more reward for me. Again, I don't pretend to know how those rewards are, what they are, how they're distributed, anything like that. But what Paul said, that it works for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. And again, here we go. We don't think right. We're thinking with an earthly mind. We're looking at the things that we can see. We're looking at the things that we can feel with this flesh. We're looking at the things that we experience in this body. Uh, we're looking at the problem, the situation, the circumstance, the trouble, the trial. We're looking at that. Paul said, don't look at that. Look at the things that are not seen. Look at the things that God has prepared for you. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for you. Uh, the descriptions we get in heaven, of heaven in the Bible, if it was just that, you couldn't comprehend. But it's so much more than that. And he said, uh, don't look at what's going on here. Don't look at what's going on in this physical life. But look at the spiritual. Look at what is waiting for you. Look at the things God has given you and done for you that can't be held in your hand. Listen, as you go through these things and you success what get through them and you grow stronger, that is of so much more value than $10 million in the bank. Yes, it is. That's right. But we want to look at what we can see, what we can touch, what we can feel, what we can hold. We got to look at the things that are not seen. That peace uh, that Peg was talking about, there is of so much more value than money. There are billions out there, billionaires out there who are miserable. Yeah. That's right. Amen. And there are paupers who have peace. Amen. There are billionaires out there giving themselves ulcers and strokes and 
hypertension and high blood pressure and heart attacks and all this stuff because they're worried about their money because they're looking at what they can see. There are people with absolutely nothing. I get one of those Voice of the Martyr magazines and read it. There are people with nothing. I mean nothing. Who all they want to do is glorify God. Because they have a peace that nothing can take away. They have a peace that passes all understanding. They have a peace that only can come from God. And how do they get that? Because they look at the things that are not seen. You want riches? Seek peace. Seek joy. Seek understanding. Seek the things of God. There's where the riches lie. That's what we need to be looking at. That's what we need to be looking for. Uh, Paul said these things we go through uh, uh, end up being for us uh, an exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Uh, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. These things that worry you so much, they're here today and gone tomorrow. But the things that we can't see are everlasting. Mm -hmm. They're eternal. They are forever. we got to get our minds right. Listen, you may think I'm talking too much about the mind, but God talks about it. Mm -hmm. He said, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said in one scripture that I read, don't be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. And then we'll give you peace. And then he said, and then think <coughs> on these things. You have to use your mind to do that. Think on these things. How many places does the Bible talk about the renewing of the mind? Mm -hmm. This is Satan's biggest entrance into That's your life. That's right. That's right. Is your mind. But if you fill your mind, with the things of God, regardless of your situation or circumstance or problem or issue, if you fill your mind with the things of God, Satan can't get through that. Satan can't get in. Look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We've got to get our minds right. I'm going to try and wrap this up. <coughs> I started off saying that we're under attack. And we are. And unless we fight back the way God tells us and shows us how to fight back, we're going to lose. Many have already lost. Again, just look around. There are people who've gotten out of church. There are people who just have no desire to be in church. There are people who, well, if I'm there, okay, and if I'm not, okay. How does that happen? It usually starts with one little thing. Mm -hmm. I don't feel good, so I'll stay home. It's easier next week mm -hmm. to say, well, I'm still not quite right, so I'll stay home. The next week, you might not even say you don't feel good. You might just say, well, I'm staying home. It gets easier. Yeah. Before you know it, you're out. Or you may uh, come to church and you didn't get your fancy tickle. And you start to tell yourself, well, I can find some place where I can get my fancy tickle. I can get what I want and this and that. So you church hop a little bit. And eventually, you're only hopping once in a while. And eventually, you're not hopping at all. Mm -hmm. And you're telling yourself, I can watch preachers on TV. Mm -hmm. I can be just as good a Christian at home as I am at church. Mm -hmm. It usually starts with one little mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. right, right. Right. One little thing. We've got to be careful. We have got to be on guard. Listen, there's some good, strong Christians in here. I know that. But if you got to a point where you were legitimately sick so that you couldn't be here for a couple weeks, it'd be hard to come back. Mm -hmm. 
And that's just because of the flesh. That's how the flesh is. That's why Satan uses the flesh against you. That's why it's called a thorn in the flesh. We are under attack. And we need to be wary. We need to be on guard. We need to be watching. And there's so many things that are coming into my mind uh, that we need to watch for. You know, Satan will make you jealous because somebody talked to somebody else more than they talked to you. Just things like that Satan will use. If you're not careful, if you're not on guard, if you're not watching, and I'm telling you, we're under attack, and he's going to try everything, so you need to be ready. You need to be wary. Uh, you need uh, to uh, have these scriptures. You need to have this word embedded in your heart and in your mind. And when anything comes along, you need to react according to the scriptures. If we rise up within our spirit and within our mind and stand up against it, we will be victorious. We will be victorious. Back to Philippians 4. We talked in here where Paul said about being careful and for nothing and all those things and to think on these things and then he said he has learned in any state to be content and all those things he can be hungry he can be full he can be abound he can suffer but listen to what he said after that i can do all things through christ which strengthens me i we quote that verse all the time but i want you to notice where he put it notice what it's in reference to it's in reference to being content in need. It's in reference to being content in the problem. It's in reference to uh, being able to be hungry, to be able to be sick, to be able to go through this, to be able to go through that. That's where that verse is. We use it for everything. And it's the word of God, so it's true. But listen to where Paul put it. He's talking about having problems and issues and situations and trials and troubles. And he said, I learned how in these things that I can still be content. I learned how in these things that I can still abound. And how can I do that? Because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. If you're not relying on Christ, if you're not going to Christ in the situation, in the circumstances, if your mind's not filled with the things of Christ, then you can't reach this end. We want to throw that verse around and use it for everything. Well, let's use it the way Paul used it. When you're sick, when you're down, when you got financial problems, when you got family problems, whatever, and it starts to eat on your mind, and you tell yourself what the scriptures have told you. In this thing, I can still be victorious in this thing. I can still have peace. Do what the scriptures say. Now, take it to God in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Begin to fill your mind with the things of God, and then you tell yourself, I can do it because Christ is strengthening me. I can do it because Christ is on my side. I can do it because he said I could do it. I'll guarantee you, you can do it through Christ. Let me throw this in here quick. Not through yourself. Right. Not through the power of positive thinking. That's right. right. Yeah. Not through uh, ways that men have dreamed up or you have dreamed up or you can uh, come up with. What he said was, I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning of verse 4. And such trust have we in, have we through Christ to God work. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Go back to it, where I started. Paul had to thorn in the flesh. He asked for it to be removed. God said no. God said my grace is sufficient. Come down to this verse. Our sufficiency is of God. You know what that means? Sufficiency. 
That's everything I need. It'll do the job.